Welcome to Congressional Connector TV with your host, Congressman Sandy Levin. I will head home and look family straight in the eye and say the federal government is on your side, providing support during this downturn and making key investments for the future. And now here's your host, Congressman Sandy Levin. This week, to talk about a very pressing issue in Washington at a time when so many Americans are still struggling to recover from the Great Recession, House Republicans have proposed cutting $20 billion from the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, commonly referred to as food stamps. That cut alone would lead two million Americans to lose vital assistance to help them put food on the table every week. So joining me this week to discuss the program and the need to maintain it is Lisa Davis, Vice President of Policy for Feeding America. Lisa is an expert in domestic hunger relief and food security. Lisa, thanks so much for joining me. Lisa, as you know, many members of Congress recently took what's called the SNAP challenge to bring attention to the proposed cuts and the need to adequately address hunger in our state and our nation. And I can say without question that the experience for me and I think my colleagues was very significant. So let's get right to it. Let's take on a few of the questions, okay? I think the first one there are nearly 50 million Americans who are food insecure, in quotes, food insecure. Can you describe what that means and talk a bit about the struggle you see some families have in putting food on the table? Absolutely. Um, Congressman Levin, first I want to thank you for your tremendous commitment and leadership on the issue of hunger. We um, really value it and you have been such a strong champion um, for our food banks and for hungry Americans. and hungry Michiganders. Um, the term food insecurity is one of those um, Washington dry terms that doesn't really convey much. Essentially it refers to those people who um, are at risk of hunger. They don't always know where their next meal is coming from or how they're going to feed their children. And food insecurity rates in the wake of the recession remain very high. In Michigan, um, more than 17.9 percent of all of your citizens face food insecurity and that number is even higher for children where nearly 25 percent of them um, are living in food insecure households um, nearly one in four kids but what does this mean um, our 202 food banks across the country including the seven in michigan um, see the the struggles that families have to um, deal with every day um, more than about 40 three percent of our clients in Michigan have said that they've had to make choices between um, paying for their utilities or putting food on the table and about 26 percent often have to choose between um, buying groceries or paying for out-of-pocket medical expenses. These are excruciating choices and choices that no family should have to make and I think it's critical that we keep that in mind um, as our elected leaders in Washington are making decisions on policies that are going to affect these people. You know, I met a, a woman in Michigan in a wheelchair who has uh, some illness and she's on food stamps and she told me that she would run out Saturday and Sunday and have to eat, just eat bread alone. And from my experience, pasta day in and day out, uh, peanut butter for lunch and cereal with a bit of milk and no fruit uh, every morning. Uh, to do it one week, um, but to do this week after week. So just say briefly what uh, SNAP is all about uh, and how it's changed. Well, SNAP is our nation's um, frontline defense against hunger. It's a program that provides um, monthly benefits to low-income Americans to help them purchase food. And right now, it serves about 47 million Americans. Um, over the years, it's changed in many different ways. Instead of the traditional stamps or coupon books that folks used to use, now benefits are loaded onto an EBT card, which has really helped make the program more efficient, has reduced stigma, and given people more choices in terms of authorized retailers. 
The biggest change that we've seen is in the sheer number of people that are accessing the SNAP program. As unemployment went up by 90 percent between 2007 and 2011, SNAP enrollment um, climbed 70 percent. Um, and as the economy recovers and jobs are created and people go back to work, SNAP rolls will drop. But we've seen a very weak economic recovery and a recovery that has been particularly elusive for low-income families. 60% of the jobs lost in the recession were middle-income jobs. Only about 22% of those created have been middle-income jobs. Families are struggling. You know, and I think everybody should go to a food pantry. I was in one St. Clair Shores at a church. It's such a wide variety of people coming. And the SNAP program has also been changed, as you mentioned it, so that there is some structure to the program, right? So people just don't go in and buy um, unnecessary items. The focus is on really what's necessary, right? And I think it's helped to make sure that the program works as intended. Absolutely. Um, purchases are limited to food that can be prepared at home. Um, and I think one thing that often gets overlooked when people talk about SNAP is just who benefits from this program. And 83% of all benefits go to a household with um, a senior, a child, or a disabled individual. And um, you know, these benefits are so important um, to help these families get by and put food on the table. And when we think about the importance of adequate nutrition and adequate food to health care, to education, um, to worker productivity, um, it's really critical that people be able to get the benefits and the food that they need to, to live and to thrive. So we're in Washington at the moment. I'm going back home soon. Let's take a few questions from constituents. This was written on Facebook. My sister, Mary, uh, she said, my sister went without a job for almost three years. The food stamps were the only thing that helped her when unemployment insurance ran out, as has been true for thousands. She had to use almost all of her retirement savings. So at age 62, she finally got a job and has to start saving again. Will these cuts in SNAP hurt the unemployed like uh, they did for this, uh, they could have done for this constituent? The cuts to SNAP um, will have a profound impact on all sorts of people. When, in, when you look at the magnitude of the cuts, $20.5 billion, um, they translate into about 8 billion lost meals over 10 years. To put that in context, our entire network of 202 food banks distributes just over 3 billion meals a year, so it really is equivalent to shutting down all of our food banks for two and a half years. Um, so yes, um, people like her sister could be hurt, and nationally, um, about 2 million people will lose benefits. Another 850,000 households will see their benefits reduced. Kids will lose free school meals. It's a profound impact on people that these cuts would have. You know, I think we should go, all of us, to schools in the district and throughout Michigan and see how many kids are receiving help for breakfast, for lunch. It's not every school, but so many. The majority in our district. So here's another, uh, another question that came from Nick. Uh, how are we controlling the abuse in food stamp programs? Because like every large program, there can be some abuse, and we've paid attention to it. So just describe briefly how the program works to try to focus on the needs of people that are so clear. Absolutely. And I think um, fraud is another area where there are a lot of misconceptions that are out there. SNAP is a remarkably efficient and effective program. The payment accuracy rate um, is at an all-time high. and the error rate is um, less than 4%, which is among the lowest of any government program. And many of those errors um, are due to caseworker error. The SNAP application is very complicated. People make mistakes. Um, the actual trafficking rate, which is what we think of when we think of abuse, is also at an all-time low and is um, less than 1%. USDA has um, launched major fraud initiatives and is looking at tracking um, better tracking um, what's going on at some of the retail stores. 
most of the fraud and SNAP happens with the small retailers, um, and so they've launched initiatives to better get after that. But it's important to keep in mind that SNAP's record on um, fraud and accuracy is among the best of any government program. You know, you and I were talking as we came over here about the programs in Southeast Michigan and what's going on with gleaners with Second Harvest and how they're running out of food. And we've taken steps here in, in Washington to encourage restaurants, encourage hospitals. Uh, because I'm on Weeks, it means we've paid attention over the years. These efforts go back a long ways to try to stimulate instead of these institutions, these restaurants, these supermarkets throwing out food, uh, where they can be used. And the response really has been so significant and heartwarming that people and farmers, we now have tried to tailor the legislation so farmers can contribute and receive some return on their costs. So I just want to thank you for all of your efforts. And I hope everybody will take a hard look at this, who accesses it, to see the effort we're making to meet real needs. So again, thank you. Well, I guess that's all the time we have today. So again, I want to thank you, Linda, Linda Davis, for joining me and helping to shed light on this important topic. So if anybody's listening have any questions and would like to learn more, uh, we would like uh, you to submit a question for my next show or just be in touch with us at the local office, 586-498-7122. So all of you who are watching, thanks for joining us, and I hope you'll do so the next time.